not overrated. <laughs> no, it's a lovely lemon steak. We, uh, uh, as usual, sitting here trying to uh, schedule when we can do these uh, Great Northern Sex yep. Cast because this is a side gig. I mean, yes. it's a fun side gig, but it's not our, main, <laughs> not our main side big yeah. thing. And so I'm like, no, I've got a lung doctor appointment. I need, I have to do it later because I like breathing. Yes. It is well, really, really, really handy. It, it's in uh, all of our interests, Colleen, yeah. is your co-host and our audience is that you remain breathing. So I'm all about the yeah. lung appointment. Yep. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get this um, mm-hmm. done. So before we even dive into the official Great Northern Sex Cast News, I've got some stories. So I just need to, <laughs> maybe I need some therapy here, maybe a little bit, <laughs> okay, but some okay. of them are just kind of really it's, relevant. It's sharing time. It's sharing time. Well, I've had two in like a four day span, naked escapades by my husband. Okay. Oh, I thought you personally having naked escapades. I See, wish. I, I get to be more naked now because I, it's now me in the house. Oh, that's which right. Is my the, cat. The daughter is off, off to, to college. college. Congratulations. Yes. So there's a lot more nudity in my house now. Well, that's, I'm all about it. Except, mm. okay, so okay. the other night, um, we, uh, we were at our cabin and there was a really spectacular thunderstorm that occurred. Mm-hmm. And, um, the Fred, the, was studio- that the one where it sounded like shit was blowing up right outside your window. Yes. Yeah. Labor I- day night. Oh yeah. Oh, holy shit. That was loud. Yes. Okay. And Fred, the studio dog is terrified and oh. his little sister Greta is also. So in, because we can't put those two together, long story, pit bull issues. Um, husband went in one room with the one dog and I had Fred with me. Well, we're working on our cabin because we're, it's about to be sold and we're, mm-hmm. we got another one. He had the window kind of dislodged because he was working on the window while well, it flew open in this horrific storm. He runs outside, you know, cause he doesn't want the window to fly off. Neither do I. No. no. But naked. Okay. That's fine. But our current- It's fairly isolated. Sort no, of? no, no. Here, well, yeah. Okay. We are on a point, mm-hmm. which the main road up to all the really expensive houses in, on our mm-hmm. lake. Um, so when the lightning struck, there he was for the whole road to see him closing the window. Honestly, almost anyone would do that because that's hundreds, if not a thousand bucks, if that window gets torn away. Really, a little modesty. I mean, it's a penis and and, and some buns. Yeah, and he's got great buns. People, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, my only thing is, I thought, you know, you could say, well, Kelly, you know, you're selling your cabin, so you're moving away. No, no, no. We're moving eight houses up. So, yeah, the neighbors Mm -hmm. have now seen all of them. Yeah, and there he is. Okay, and later that same week, last Mm -hmm. week was a busy week for me. Mm -hmm. Um, he was tired and was in bed, and Mm -hmm. I was in the living room. And inexplicably, our medicine, our custom, we have a custom medicine cabinet in our upstairs bathroom because mm. it's an old house and we had to have something special built. Mm-hmm. The, so the medicine cabinet door doesn't look like, it doesn't look like one. It's just this big, beautiful mirror. Mm. It just fell off the hinges and crashed to the ground, right? He's in his dead sleep. And it was hanging there for 16 years, okay? Yeah, uh, this is when it decides. Yeah, d- that particular moment. Mm. Husband comes barreling out of a dead sleep, again, butt naked, which is fine for me, but Mm. I'm sorry. When somebody is butt naked with their hands on their hips and says something to the effect of, what the hell happened? Were you hanging on that door and and starts to shame and accuse you? How can you not, how can you take that seriously? No, you're not. Yeah, no, because it was, it was mom pose. It it seemed to me. Uh Uh-huh. Mom post. Yeah, yeah, you got the you got the hands on the hips and you're and, and oh, yeah. going through there and you see it all the time. Oh sure. And that's I I can't take that seriously. No. I don't care who's doing it, even a mom I just I'm sorry. All I, I could see was the wiener in between the hands on the hips. Yeah. And I'm like, what'd you say? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Oh right. No. And then then after I got my my bearings, so mm-hmm. to speak, yeah. I said, Well, you heard it. I am still sitting in this other room. So no, I think it's safe to say I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> so oh. I've never gotten into a little tiff with him mm-hmm. when he's been completely naked. That was new. <laughs> I, I, yeah. And then you gotta, then you gotta clean up glass shards. Hopefully not in the nude. No, I told him to put on pants for that part. Yeah. And yeah. She, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. One more thing. And this is me processing, <laughs> but it's a, okay. So my sister's youngest is 35, uh, a boy. And he, um, 
Really, he's been living in Texas um, for his job for several years, and he's been homesick. He got a great new job, and he actually started um, today, And uh, but he arrived last week, and he wanted to stay mm-hmm. with us for a bit. Fine. Absolutely no problem. He shows up the first night. He goes out with his friends, which I fully expect, mm-hmm. and um, you know he's tired the next day. Night two... Um, an ex-girlfriend picks him up. Also fine. I don't care. He's a grown man. Mm-hmm. Um, his parents were over for dinner. He had dinner with us. And then he, this cute girl picks him up and they leave. I don't think much about it other than I noticed how small the girl was and how freaking enormous the SUV she was driving was. I mean, like a gigantic. I'm like, how could she get in there? She's not even like, I mean, talk about a little widget. I couldn't mm-hmm. believe it. So the next morning <laughs> I wake up. And I'm, it's like about 5.30 and I'm sipping my coffee and I'm kind of looking at the news and I'm kind of la, 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 la. I look out the window and all of a sudden I see the SUV in front of my house. And then I go, oh my God, they're in the basement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just was like, I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? Not that I cared Colleen. No, but you don't want not see now you realize you don't want to wake folks up or, you know, and then you're like, then, then it's your place. And, and if you want to make coffee loudly, I don't know. You know. I didn't want to see the walk of shame. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. I did not want to see the walk of shame. And so. Oh, there is no shame in your thirties. It's like you, you, you almost want a little parade. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I, well, I did the perfectly adult thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I thought it was becoming inevitable that somebody was going to emerge, mm-hmm. I made myself a bagel, grabbed Fred, the studio dog and hid in my office. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Guess what? I heard the basement door. Come over. I hear little footsteps. And then I hear the front door. And I was like, oh, thank God. God. (laughs) Oh, my God. But, you know, nobody wants to. Everybody makes jokes about not wanting to see their parents or their older relatives. I don't want I just don't want to know. Go have a good time. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. But it's what I said to my boss in my Mm -hmm. weekly report because we type up these things on Mm -hmm. Friday mornings. I said, you know, it's we all occasionally have to watch sausage being made, Mm -hmm. but to know it was hidden in my house (laughs) is unnerving in ways I cannot describe. I suppose that is my future. Yeah, you know, know, my child is getting older and all that sort of stuff. (laughs) Yeah, and I and I've got sort of a small house and has creaky floors and the doors bang, you know, with Mm -hmm. you know, or or you've got to you know bring them, yeah, and 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 everything. I mean, everything rattles in my house. Which, you know, yeah. is part of the charm. Mm-hmm. Mine too. Yeah. I get that. But, you know, the question I have for you as a parent, because I noticed there was kind of a a buffer period between when you still didn't, you know, acknowledge or talk about the fact that you're in your early 20s and you have sex, and to when you come home for the weekend and your boyfriend sleeps with you in the guest room. Yeah. Like, what's... I never did, yeah. My, 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 no, I never managed that with my parents. See, my parents grew up and moved away. From you? Yeah. They, yeah, they went to New Jersey. Oh, you're kidding. And so when I came back, Home moved when, away when, from when you. they came back, oh my gosh, okay. I had already had my place. So it was, this was just not an issue. Okay. But so, you know, I went through that and it was weird. But then it just kind of went away. But my parent, my mom was kind of goofy about that shit. All right. My toes are extra slobbery now. And they're extra cute. You have a great looking pedicure, but I might yeah, add. No, it's, it's, it's the, the, I, I kind of like Easter colors. The, the nails have changed, but the toenails are still light. But a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I think I want like lavender toes. They're cute. They mm-hmm. look really nice. Um, mm-hmm. We got to start with something that happened naked. And it's okay. really only in the news because mm-hmm. it's naked, but it's so good. Yeah. I mean, did you do anything? I mean, if this was not naked, it would not make news. It's I mean, probably, you know. I don't know. This one, maybe. But not as, yeah. It, it would it, it would be lower. It would, it, it would be lower in, like, the news of the weird column. It would only if they didn't have naked stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, you tell me. Okay. okay this one. Because in, seasonally speaking, if this happened around Christmas, it would still make news. Okay. okay. Culver City, California. Very okay. close to the Hollywood thing. Mm-hmm. Um, a woman um, was uh, walking... Uh, out to her car and she heard weird noises coming from across the street on a Saturday morning and she kind of got close closer and she said I heard a voice out of nowhere saying hi can you bring me water and she said yeah I will where are you and then he said in the chimney she got the water and started recording the incident the man had broken into a house a couple blocks away and after being spooked he took off running and then he was found by sheriff's deputy deputies naked and stuck in the chimney 
two hours later. He tried to explain why he was in the chimney, but nobody's really buying mm. it. Um, so she called the police. The, she was the first one to notice. Uh huh. That the, the the okay. Yeah. I I you know I I have a friend who's like you know, okay you'll read like body found on Parkway. Yeah. Okay. And this friend would like to be the person that finds the body. They're just curious about something like that. And it's been close by. They they worked downtown Minneapolis once and there was a, a body nearby and she got to work too early to, to it was too dark to see had mm-hmm. she, you know. And I'm like and I'm like, I don't know. If I you know, when I'm going out to like get the newspaper in the morning, I don't wanna hear like noises come coming from my neighbor's chimney. What you happens what I mean? if you do? Yeah, I don't you know. I, would I, you know, I, I think I would be okay. I mean, I, I, I got an alarm call at 3.30 in the morning and I had to drive out to a store and it was a complete false alarm. Long story. It wasn't even my panel that screwed up. Software screwed up in Arizona and I get the phone call. Somehow, wow. somehow a panel freaks out and uh, I'm hoping this person got their police call. Right. But somehow the software said that it was my, you know, a store here. And I'm like, you've got to be out of your mind. So I've got to drive. You know, so I, I you know I'm I'm searching I'm searching a store at four for four fifteen in the morning. I, I'm not scared by it, so I think I would do, you know, do okay with someone in a chimney. I don't. Sorry, I'm digressing. It was just no. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. scanning my brain to see how I would feel. Yeah. If I heard somebody calling for help saying that they needed water, I think it would be nine. Yeah. I think yeah. Where are you? Uh huh. And yeah. then I would call nine one one regardless uh-huh. because if somebody's in a chimney. Maybe something they they're there because either they did something or something happened to them. Yeah, I mean they were you know was, there was there was a poor decision somewhere and they need help or an accident. Yeah, an accident. Yeah, I mean right. suppose you could be t- tuck pointing early in the morning. <laughs> The, your stuff and you fall in, and, and, and you and you fall into your chimney. Nude. You know, I only know what that means because I was on my condo board uh, and we yeah. had to do the building. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is tuck pointing? That sounds like it could be a sex act, doesn't it? it? Oh my god! You it want does. a tuck point? <laughs> okay, we got to come up. But we, okay, How, what so, so people entail? know we've got we've got the you know, I, and I know people listen. You know, I see that, uh, things over there and we have the Facebook site. So if you can think of like a good thing, I would, I'd be curious if people are listening enough that they feel the need to come up with an explanation for what tuck pointing would be as a sexual activity. Oh, I'd love to hear some creative responses to that. Mm-hmm. You know, love if I get to, yeah. uber motivated, I'll go onto Reddit and see if I can get people to yeah. see what they can say. <laughs> that would be funny. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is some potty humor. We do this occasionally, <laughs> but this isn't funny. If I had to think about criminals, besides like, you know, like the real serious shit, like, you know, the, the more petty type of crimes, yeah. mm-hmm. vandalism pisses me off. Yeah. And not I, graffiti. I, I not graffiti. Well, graffiti on, I don't I, know. I, I have one of my stores that, that gets hit and it's a pain in the ass. Some of them I are such good not, artists. Like, yeah. But it's not that way. This is just scrawling, stupid shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. But the art that they do appropriately well, yeah, yeah, yeah. is cool. When, when, when folks do this you know, stuff and they're at a show or they've got, you know, the right venue, someone asks you to do something, fine. Yep. But randomly tagging shit, I, I do not see the point. I don't either. And I think that just like, you know, the kids, everybody goes, oh, haha, they, everybody smashes mailbox in high school. Well, you no, know what? No, they don't. No. And it's rude and it's pain in the ass and it's annoying mm-hmm. and it's just stop it. Okay. But this happened, Rhode Island. Um, somebody set off explosives inside of a couple of porta potties and blew them to pieces in two different towns. Oh, good. Because what you really need is molten fucking plastic. That and biomass f- yeah. flying around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Disgusting. Oh. There, uh, the uh, office of, the, of Rhode Island State Fire Marshal is now investigating, and they are offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to arrest and conviction of whoever is responsible for those blasts. And I really hope that somebody gets that reward and turns those idiots in. I, yeah, I've, it's, just, it's just frustrating. People do dumb, dumb shit with shit, actually, this time. Exactly. Well uh-huh. put. Um, in other New England weirdness, um, there's a conservation area called the Grace Richardson Conservation Area in Fairfield, Connecticut, which probably means Grace Richardson probably donated some money to make this happen, which is cool. 
Um, but she probably wouldn't love knowing how many senior citizens have been arrested there for lewd and sexual activity. Um, there were several violations observed, six people arrested, including two octogenarians, Richard and Joyce Butler, 82 and 85, charged with breach of the peace. They are husband and wife. Um, and then um, they they pretty much were guilty. 62-year-old Otto Williams and Charles Ardito, 75, and then two other guys, public indecency. But one of them said, well, you know, I don't have any blood flow. I, my doctor can back me up. Actually, he says he has three doctors that can back him up. So he says he wasn't having sex. That doesn't explain why he didn't have any clothes on. <laughs> but um, Okay, so more details here because I think we touched on this, but we did not have details. This is a different story, different area. Oh, this no, no. They found another. Yeah. They found. Mm-hmm. They, found Actually, they went to another. I don't think it's the same people. It's just. So there's just something about New England. Mm-hmm. And, so in other words. It's, I mean, if you really want to have sex, 70 plus, New England is where you want to be in the outdoors. Clearly. Well, you know, just why not be comfy? Why risk the bug bites? See that? Yeah. I mean, I, mosquito bites and me are not, I, they're just certain places I do not want a mosquito bite. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, which makes me think of boobs, which makes me think of under boob, which makes me think of that right now in the burlesque community, you know, people used to wear pasties, mm-hmm. but now not only does your nipple have to be covered, but the under boob needs to be covered. Not side boob or cleavage or top, but under boob is too sexy. So they're, the folks are clamping down on that. And I'm like, okay, so if you're like an A cup, you're going to have less under boob than like a D cup. And is there a particular squ- I mean, seriously, the boob police have got to stop this shit. And it's, it, like I said, we don't, we don't make it. Where, where does this rule apply to? I, I'm not, like clubs or something? Yeah, I'm not sure. Burlesque performances, I guess. Okay. There were, yeah, because uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we, uh, the, uh, we had uh, Crypticon. And there was a booth there. Mm-hmm. And one of the burlesque performers, who obviously did quite well because they came back later and spent a lot at our, okay. at our pop-up store, which was cool. lovely, they were talking about underboob. And, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And so Liz and I are trying to figure out, like, okay, like, I'm like a double D. So that would be a lot more area. You know, I'm like, so, so now you have to have like a tiny triangle. I don't understand. I don't either. I, it makes no sense. And, and the engineering involved. It's the like, underbra- unless you're and, wearing a full-on bra. Yeah. So so I'm thinking, could you just like cut out squares of like like a like a trapezoid, like a four-sided thing, and it's like cover your underboob? I don't know. I mean, could you put like beige material? I, I, I don't the, know. The ass nineness of this it, it, it absolutely blew my mind. Mine so that means not mosquito bites in the boobs. That's where... Well, and that, that was just a nice little map of your brain, mm-hmm. which, you know, we appreciate. Mm-hmm. And cause I, I get lost in there sometimes. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Yeah. But really quickly before we close okay. out the story, mm-hmm. I just want to tell you that one of the gentlemen, um, uh, Daniel Dobbins, 67 years old, this was not his first arrest, uh, in this park for, um, bre- breaching the peace. Um, he, uh, had been arrested once before on similar charges. Two years ago, he was found by cops unclothed in his car Though he says he was naked for medical reasons. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, you know, I, I, I like naked. Naked's awesome. I simply, honestly don't want to be all that naked outdoors because bucks and yeah. sunburn. And, mm-hmm. you know, generally nature is pretty, mm-hmm. but nature wants to kill you. Yeah. So... Why you would go out without some sort of layer of protection is a little bit beyond me. Now, I know lots of people like it. We got the whole northern, the whole camp hardwood and stuff like that, where people do all sorts of things naked up in the woods. But it is so not my deal. I think it's probably because I'm really allergic to mosquitoes. Oh, me too. It just, it would be, I just, no. I mean, can you, I mean, can you, I don't even want to think about a mosquito bite on like labia. No. I, I don't either. Would, no, there would be nothing comfortable about that. Whatsoever. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which brings me to mm-hmm. a story that you sent me. Okay. Now now we got to remember, because see, what happens is that usually these happen <laughs> when I can't sleep. 
and then or people send me things and then okay. I have and I just I send them to you and Megan and I'm hoping I can remember what the hell I sent you. Okay, trust me, I remember this whole thing because okay. you sent it to me. Mm. I read it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm driving to work one day talking to a friend slash coworker and I said, Hey, have you seen the story about the seagull? And she said, No. Oh. And now mind you, I had read it and I was like, Wow. Okay, but now I am in the position of telling her this story. And she goes, what happened? I said, well, this man was sunbathing nude in his backyard. See, outside and naked. Naked perfect, and nature. Perfect segue. Mm-hmm. And he was just laying there minding his own business, and a seagull swooped down and bit off one of his balls and took off with it. Now, when I said bit off one of his balls to her, mm-hmm. all of a sudden... I started laughing and Mm. laughing and laughing and laughing. Now, the poor guy, I will say for the record, is fine. He does only have one left. They stitched him up, all of that kind of stuff. And the supposition was that it was a young seagull and thought that those were eggs laid Mm. by another bird because they steal other birds' eggs. So then there's. There are prosthetic testicles that people get when they're testicular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so probably uh, he could have, uh, you know, probably need some healing. Yep. And then we could have. So. Yeah. They said he could still have kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But the seagull. Okay. So the more I thought about just the fact that, and then when I went to my computer to pull it up, the picture of the seagull that they had there, which I'm sure was not the actual perp, mm-hmm. but whatever. But the seagull looked pretty angry and he had his beak open. That thing is fucking sharp. Because I was thinking, how could a seagull rip off a... Oh! oh yeah, they got, a, they got it's sort of the, the top part of the beak is oh. sort of pointy. I can't even imagine. I laughed about that for like days, though. I mean, it just was one of those things where I lost it. Yeah, because it just, you're like, this is, you know, it's like here is probably a perfectly reasonable person. I mean, it's not as though the seagull looks for like assholes and eats their testicle. No, this is just an no. ordinary dude. It doesn't sound yeah. like, you know, like, like, you know, he was doing something like, I don't know, being an asshole while being nude. And mm-hmm. then someone no, just, and, and, but no, just sunbathing and the testicle go. Yeah. But of course I had to go down the path of wondering why anybody needs to tan that particular, uh, you know, area. So of course I'm like, okay, eggs, huevos, mm-hmm. which, and if you mm-hmm, know yeah. anybody that speaks Spanish, there's that, but I wanted to know why nuts needed to get roasted anyway. And just mm-hmm. for like literally a half go, a yeah, day, I was just, a wreck. You, you I couldn't kept, stop. Yeah. You, d- you just, you, you go down that path yeah. and you, you know, you're glad the guy's okay, but you're just thinking out of all the human beings that you wouldn't mind like a seagull eating your testicle. This mm-hmm. does not sound like the guy that, that should have happened to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I, mean, I, I hope something really good happens, you know, at this point to this guy. Cause uh, that's yeah. traumatic. Yeah. That's he a deserves, big deal. He does a good thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Next story, not so good. Mm. And um, I have kind of a personal thing to go along with this. Um, a, a physiotherapist uh, is uh, really in trouble uh, because he allegedly tricked a woman into gripping his penis in a test for her back pain. Now, how would that happen? 30-year-old Andrew Davidson performed the hand strength check as the woman lay face down on a treatment table. T- have you ever been on one of those? You know what I'm talking about? They've got the cutouts. It's kind of like a massage yeah, table, um, yeah, but like a chiropractor yeah. ha- would have uh-huh. it. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, apparently, um, she had to reach out and squeeze. She thought he was squeeze. She, he said, these are my fingers, but she found what looked like semen on her leggings and they performed a DNA test and yep, that's what it was. How, um, I suppose I would know that, the difference. That, yeah, well, I would know the difference, but I'm I'm also thinking that you could your brain could be so scrambled by how wrong it is that you you that, that you're not don't want to believe it that you don't want to believe it. Yeah, yeah, we go through there. Yeah, yeah, because I mean we had um uh, I had the wrist surgery and it was really funny because we got some new uh, dildos into the office from Blush oh. and it was really I think it was Blush, but it was really fun. Because we were in there and they're like, here it feels. And, and really, I grabbed one and I squeezed it and I realized, oh, my wrist doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> I said, this is good because that particular motion was not, you know, was not working out well with the po- before and, and the post-surgery. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Good and for you. 
Um, yeah. yeah. So he's in trouble. He's been, um, uh, you know, cited and um, what they call struck off the list for being able to work, which is perfectly appropriate. Um, so speaking of chiropractors, I used to be married to one. And um, after when I was getting a divorce, um, I was doing the match.com thing. And I met this person for coffee who turned out to be, I thought, God, there's something familiar about this guy. I hadn't seen him in 10 years. Well, Mm -hmm. I didn't know who he was yet. And finally, um, I realized that he too was a chiropractor, Mm -hmm. had been at my wedding and had been in school with my soon to be Mm -hmm. ex-husband. That's all okay, really, except um, he had been in jail for sexually assaulting a patient. Oh. And I was like, oh, my God. And and he said, oh, no, it was a misunderstanding, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, you know what? You know, Mm -hmm. I read this story in the newspaper. You weren't supposed to be using a computer. Mm -hmm. You are a felon. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my God, I just had coffee with a sexual predator. And I'm, like, running. And I'm, you know, like, whatever. So just be careful, everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, And he got his license reinstated, which spurred a law the following year in our state legislature that, you, you know, he was mm-hmm. the last guy to sneak through. After you get convicted of what he got convicted of, you can't get your license, license back. back. Oh, yay. Yeah, I just, just oh, 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 oh. You got the pup up. I he just pup came pup. to sit next mm-hmm. to you. Um, this is humorous, and I have to give the engineers on this one all sorts of uh, kudos because I can't believe what they can do these days with mm-hmm. technology and everything else. So public potties, you know, love them or hate them, you know, we all occasionally need them. And um, people, like we talked about earlier, oh, he's nesting. Mm-hmm. If you hear scraping, that's Fred the studio dog trying mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. nest in the leather couch. Um, you know, some jackasses blew up some porta potties. These are... Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. He's pawing the couch. No, okay, what are you on, doing? Just, just sit down. That's oh. enough. Just lay down. Oh my God, Fred! Oh, <laughs> cool, lay by. He's tired. Just lay down. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just I know. He's I love just... my carrier, but, but the doggy's really cute. He is cute, and he loves you. Mm-hmm. He just can't get comfy over mm-hmm. there. So these new public toilets have security features designed to hinder violence, vandalism, sleeping, and anything two people might do together. Mm -hmm. And media outlets are dubbing them anti-sex toilets. So they've got weight sensors ensuring that there's only one person at a time. Sound alarms, water spray can go off if violent movement is detected. So what's the weight... What's the weight limit? Does it mention? Doesn't say. It doesn't say. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean... That could be tough. Honestly, yeah, I mean, there are some people that are pretty damn big. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm 220 pounds. My guy's 225 pounds. Yeah. So, would that, you know, I mean, what if I, someone could be 400 pounds? I, my, yeah. yes, I know someone who is. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. Sorry. Just... No, no, but um, the, anything that, you know, all can, can you imagine though, if you're in there and then water sprays at you and like, I mean, it's kind of funny. They cost 200 grand, but, um, they also t- automatically shut down at night for, um, 10 minutes to undergo a deep clean. And, um, people are saying, Hey, we want to support leisure within the park and businesses and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, if people are going in there and having sex, it's just, it's just not good for an atmosphere around here. How do you feel about that? No, you need, there are plenty of people. Well, okay, as we know from the folks in Rhode Island, there's plenty of people that want to have sex in the park. Mm-hmm. But honestly, there are more people who want to use the bathroom in the park, and yeah, I think they have take sex. Pre- that, that, that they take precedence. Yeah, and well, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's just kind yeah, of funny. It, it would be nice. I wonder. You know, I should look this up to see if there's like a a public bathroom app or something like that. They're really expensive, but oh, there are just times. With, yeah, there are just times. I mean, I I know that people can like if you go to this to the uh, Minneapolis airport, you can check into the Senator's, um, uh, Senator's bathroom. Who is it? Um, Craig, Larry Craig, you remember there was a whole thing like an, over a decade ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. Someone just made a check-in on fa- Facebook for the, um, for the Memorial Craig, you know, oh, bathroom yeah. and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. And I bet you anything, there probably is a site for where there's a decent bathroom because, you know, I have to pee a lot. I still do. Yeah. I mean, and so I have to think about where there's a bathroom. I don't like having to think about that. Yep. 
but I do have to think about it. We, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I like to know. So it there's... really annoys me when people do stuff to like mess up public bathrooms right. for people. I mean, it's mm-hmm. if you have to go bad and you're lucky to find one, mm-hmm. you know, I would never defile. That's just terrible. In fact, I'm guilty of anything of cleaning up bathrooms. I have I have reattached change, change toilet paper me too. rolls. Um I have no I I I've grabbed like a big wad of paper and then picked up something that was on, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, although when I did have to run into the Walmart on my trip, I did notice that there was shit on the floor. And I did grab paper and put it over top of it. So that And that's it, when you yeah. turn on the little and switch then, that says attention. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like I'm not you know, no, I'm not picking someone else's crap off the ba- wall or bathroom you know, floor. That's, that, yeah, you don't have to. No, nope. no, I don't. Mm-mm. Like I, you know, I've fixed chains. I've taken off tops and fixed the inside of the toilet. I know how to do that shit. I'll go mm. for sure. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, this next story, we'll post all these, of course, on the Great Northern Sex Cast Facebook. Mm-hmm. But um, there's weird laws that can get you in big trouble for seemingly innocent things mm. in other countries. So okay. we're going to run through these because some of these are pretty interesting. Mm. Um, I would be immediately arrested. Uh, one guy, a diving instructor from Britain, uh, was facing up to three years behind bars in Oman after swearing an airport, uh, finding out that his flight had been delayed. So he said something like, fuck, or... No swearing in public, huh? Uh-uh. And they also smelled alcohol on his breath, which um, being drinking Ooh. or being drunk in public is an offense there. Mm. So be careful in Oman for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Dubai, United I'm Arab... I'm sure it'd probably even be worse if it was female. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dubai, you know, United Arab Emirates. Um, this one guy, a tourist, uh, was from Scotland. He was arrested for public indecency after touching a man's hip in a crowded bar which he claimed he did to avoid spilling a drink, which, you know, I try not to just, I, well, I never just indiscriminately touch strangers, Mm -hmm. but like, I will put my hand out if they're about to bump into me or if I want them to know that I'm behind them, you know, I Mm -hmm. might just kind of, you know, but, um, I usually end up just whacking them with my enormous purse. Okay. You know, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. Um, he was arrested, um, and they, uh, took him, his passport away, but they did get him out, uh, after the, uh, the ruler Mm -hmm. actually personally intervened. Um, this one's weird in Sri Lanka. Um, a gal, uh, was there and she had, um, a Buddha tattoo and that's a Buddhist country. And she was held for four days because of, of the tattoo. Then she was deported, um, and she ended up winning a lawsuit against them because a court ruled there was no legal basis. Um, but so in other words, when, when you think about this, you, think, uh, you know, there's probably going to be a fair amount of lawsuits at one point against uh, uh, U.S. border and you know control, yeah. letting people, you know, uh, the, what they're following now. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, Saudi Arabia, no surprise, engaging in PDA. Um, a couple got arrested after a man filmed himself giving his girlfriend a peck on the cheek during a driving lesson. Uh, they found it on social media <laughs> and they, they I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I understand that sometimes you're trying to like push back and do different things and explore stuff like that. But other times I think, you know, why are you just leaving evidence? <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you gotta, you know, if a law is stupid. You got to, you know, does, yeah. Yeah, you got to work with it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Poland surprised me. Mm-hmm. They, uh, there's a town in Poland that banned Winnie the Pooh. Um, he could get you in trouble. Fluffy with and lo- puffy all stuffed with fluff, Winnie the Pooh? Yes. He has dubious, local lawmakers in a particular town uh, says he has dubious sexuality and inappropriate dress. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Let it out. It's okay. <laughs> one local. I mean, no one. No. Everyone. Uh, there's. Is anyone wearing? Only Christopher Robin even wears pants. I think. Yeah. Just wait a minute. Does Does Rue have a little like little overalls? What is Rue? Rue. Rue. I think. Rue. I think. Rue, I think. Has. I think. Has a. T- just, but a lot of people, you know, Winnie's way more famous. Mm-hmm. So Rue's probably still flying under the Polish radar on yeah. this one. Mm-hmm. But. One of the local city councilors even called the bear a hermaphrodite. And they says the problem with that bear is it doesn't, I'm quoting now. Oh, the problem oh, with that bear is it doesn't have a complete wardrobe. It is half naked, which is wholly inappropriate for children. He's only dressed from the waist up. <laughs> really? Honestly, what I want to know is what were they 
deflecting from? What were they doing that they decided to make to, to deal with this? Because there's something else they were trying to divert attention from. Okay. <laughs> there's, I, no, there's no way in hell. There's just not to divert attention from something else. Dubious sexuality and inappropriate dress for of Winnie the, the Pooh. Florida. You can mm-hmm. get arrested and cited for twerking in front of children. Um, 27-year-old Valerie Dixon uh, was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct in Lake County, County Florida. So maybe Lizzo should not go to Florida because she does a lot of twerking. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. But, you know, she grabbed her one hand with her ankle and the other on her genitals and was doing this in oh, front of a school well, bus. Yeah, that's a little bit. Okay, there's there's more going on there. They're just butt shaking. Yes. Although I think my right buttock was trying to twerk on its own the other day because it was like muscle spasms. You know, sometimes sometimes it'd be like sometimes it'd like it'd be your shoulder or yeah. you your finger. This was my right butt, and I'm like, I'm sitting, I'm like, is is my one my ass trying to twerk all on its own? A half twerk? Yeah, but you know, <laughs> believe me, they just with my knees because really twerking is a lot of knee stuff too. Oh like yeah, like this sort of yeah. They just they're, yeah. I, I think. I'm pretty sure that I never twerked, but I'm pretty sure that I never will twerk because I'm things are just going to hurt. Half a twerk would that be like an irk? I don't know, but it was that's all I kept thinking is, oh my god, my like right buttock is attempting to twerk all on its own. Wow! And made me, see no was you know it how fun that, or were you disturbed? It was it was just sort of weird. Okay, like, why is this? You know, so like it, it was just very. It's sort of like you were entertained by the other. I was entertained by my self twerking right buttock. Perfect. Mm-hmm. This one's an interesting uh, story here. Um, Las Vegas is weird. I mean, I haven't been there for so long. Yeah. I miss it. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. I'm not a gambler, but I like oh, to no, just go and and really enjoy the weirdness. And yeah. there's a uh, a couple. This this uh, I went to Reddit, um, but this guy went to the "Am I the asshole?" foreign question mark. Okay, and um, he says, "Look." I've never had a problem with my girlfriend um, and he respects her choice that she doesn't shave her pubes. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we all know that Bush has been making a comeback Mm -hmm. in recent years, Um, but they were going to go to this private pool club, which is, quote, notorious for only letting in attractive people. He goes, women go in there with high heels and bikinis, full makeup, for example. Mm -hmm. So they're getting ready to leave to go to this exclusive pool club. And the man noticed that his girlfriend's unshaven bikini line was visible from the swimsuit she was wearing. And he says the hair isn't super thick or long, but he said he nicely pointed out to her that her hair was kind of obvious and suggested she wore one of her other swimsuits. She got mad, refused to change, and pointed out that he's not going to wear long pants, even though he's got hairy legs. And he goes, well, look, um, pubes are different for some people. So, you know, as I'm sure you can imagine on Reddit, there was plenty of ire from people who think, you know, whatever. But other people said, yeah, I really don't want to see other people's pubes. What do you think? Um, I was, I, I, one of the last times I was in Vegas, we, I stayed at the Hard Rock. Okay. Okay. And on Sunday they have something called like recovery or the hangover party, whatever it is, you know, it's Sunday morning after it's going through there. Yeah. And you're, you know, and I didn't know this existed and I had on the like jeans and a t-shirt and my friends were already in there. Okay. But I didn't bring anything, you know, I was denied entry because I was wearing jeans. No, the reason I was denied entry is that I would enter entry was the fact that I was probably oh God, this is quite a number of years ago, um, probably in my you know late thirties, not you know a hundred pounds, and wasn't wearing like a really tiny bikini. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So the hard rock is not. I mean, I'm like I, I was fine if you know if I couldn't have you know they said this because I was wearing jeans, I could turn and I could see very attractive. Much younger women wearing jeans. Yeah. But I, mean, I said, you know, and I, I don't care what the rules are for something like that. That's a private business. They can mm-hmm. do what they want. But you can't be hypocrites about it. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's I agree. going through there. And, and the pubic hair is that they, they were, put it this way. They were not going to get in. Mm-hmm. They were not going to get in with the bush escaping. No. No. And, you know, he's, you know, so he's like, and he could have gone, okay, we can go. But I can tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know. It's going through there. In, in my way, I don't think he was an asshole because he was probably no. trying to spare her from you know, getting called out. Yeah. You know what's, he, he knew what was going to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. 
it's going through you know you know maybe there's a difference it's like i don't really give a crap but where we're going it, it may not work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so. I, I kind of am on his side. I think he was trying to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about this before, but just to bring it back up again, I'm wondering if this is going to become far more common slash popular. Um, the O shots. Um, this is a, a, a gal who was getting married and she'd had, she'd been in a really long um, very sexually lackluster relationship. And then she met, a, you know, they, that broke up and she met a new guy, but she was like, um, not ha- you know, her orgasms weren't great. It's like, she felt like she had lost her mojo. So she got the, um, O shot, which is a non-surgical treatment to augment and rejuvenate the G spot clitoris and labia. And, um, so she said it worked amazing and, um, it was administered by, uh, Dr. Sheeran Lakani, the first female doctor. What is in this? Well, it, it says they take blood from the arm, spin it to isolate platelets responsible for rejuvenation and repair, and then inject it back into the inner walls of the vagina and clitoris. It stimulates collagen production, resulting in increased libido and heightened sensitivity, and she said, I began to feel tingly down there. Vincent noticed very quickly. She said she had multiple prolonged orgasms and um, she's absolutely thrilled. Well, we've heard over and over, uh, and, and I'm just going to paraphrase these studies, use it or lose it. Yeah. And it's going through there. And I can, and it, it does not like someone's trying to inject like silicone or something. You should, it's your own stuff. I, you know, I can sort of see that because there could be there be lots of different reasons why someone did not wasn't able to maintain, you know, a sexual, you know, a relationship or even enough masturbation and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, this seems like a, a fairly safe way. I'm a, I, I'll be curious when this gets booked to to read the entire article. Yeah, this this I can get behind because there can be, you know, a lot of different reasons. I mean, think about someone who may have had. Uh, cervical cancer or something that might need help. You know, if they There's can a lot of do yeah, it, yet. oh, any kind of cancer, really. Yeah. I mean, I think See, a lot of people... Because a lot of people like this, you, just, you don't stop being a sexual being because you haven't had sex or going through mm-hmm. there. If your brain wants it, your body's not cooperating. Yep. And this is a way of doing it that's not bringing in, you know, like, uh, you know, it's not garlic you know, crap like that. This is your own stuff. Yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. It, it, yeah. So I'll be interested. We'll post this story and then we'll mm-hmm. follow it as time goes on. Um, first chlamydia it, vaccine tested in humans shows promise. They need many more trials. Mm-hmm. Um, but the British, uh, medical journal, the Lancet, mm-hmm. um, said research is still in its early days. Um, but we're very happy. We've gotten what they are describing as a robust response. I, I, I'm hoping that eventually, because this is this is Great Britain is going through there, and mm-hmm. I certainly hope that when it is approved, there if this if it goes forward and is something that the uh, uh, Great Britain decides is safe, mm-hmm. that they don't, you know, lag here because it has something to do with sex. I mean, people, no. you know, is going yeah. through there because chlamydia, and we've talked about this before. You cannot know you have it. Oh, yeah. And you can pass it on and not know you're passing it on. You could have it for a long, long time. Yeah. It can totally screw with a woman's fertility. Mm-hmm. And you just don't know. It. And so there you are. You have no idea that 10 years ago, the, well, you know, someone who didn't know how it gave, it gave it to you. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, yeah, that is spectacular. Yeah. It's going through there because once again, if I'm not mistaken, chlamydia is... A virus, and every time they figure out something to help with a virus, I bet it helps with. I mean, I mean, wouldn't you just love it if they could figure out the common cold? Oh God, yes. I mean, forgot you know stuff like that. So it just all of that research, you know, helps a lot of different things. Yep. And if, you know, and it would probably help a lot uh, for folks that are uh, like I said, fertility is a huge issue. Yep. Undiagnosed chlamydia. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, this is interesting and it kind of gets into some of the gender issues we touch upon here in a mm-hmm. very changing world in a fluid way. Mm-hmm. Um, for more than 550 years, the state and cathedral choir of Berlin has performed all over Germany and the world. Um, it is a renowned boys choir and a nine year old girl has filed a lawsuit for being denied, uh, you know, admission into the choir. 
and um, they're claiming it infringed on her right to equal opportunities um, in state support. Um, the choir talks about a certain, it's almost like a, um, how do you say, you know, like you, you describe like a tenor and a soprano and whatever. They're saying there's a certain sound and she didn't fit it. Um, so we'll see how this, uh, you know, goes. But the quote from the state says, anyone who wants to enforce a misunderstood gender equality here sacrifices a cultural asset. Thoughts? Honestly, that cultural asset started during a time uh, when when excluding women was normal. Right. And I honestly don't think that in this case, personally, that, um, you know, you might as well just say women should just be home barefoot and pregnant. It, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's probably something that needs to go away. It, you know, it's going through there. Now, especially since it's state, and, and I don't know how the rules Work yeah, I don't know how they're set up Germany, over there. Stuff like that. But it's never, it, it's, you know, just because uh, golf courses in the U.S. were men only for years doesn't mean they just go through there. there it, was, it was set up as a time to exclude women. And it's almost, you know, we're 20, you know, 20 years into another century. That yeah. shit can stop. Yeah. Yeah. To some, you know, it's going through that. There are very, you know, uh, you know, it. it because if if they were to have blind auditions, where you just hear someone sing, how much you want to bet they couldn't tell? It's possible. It's possible. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it gets into, this is not a private organization. This has to do, yeah. this is government. So I have a different take mm-hmm. when, it's, yeah. when it's that, because that's, yeah. that's equal yeah. access to support, really. Yeah, support, because then they're saying that, I mean, the, 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 the boys in the squire could go on easier to have... Um, a, a career in music. Yep. There's opportunities going through there and you just, and if there's not, and like I said, I don't know the rules, but if there's not in, uh, and you know, in this country, separate but equal has been, been called wrong. And because there is no such thing, honestly, because they all know it's separate but equal. Yeah. It just doesn't work. You know, on paper, it looks good. In reality, that shit doesn't work. Yeah. Well, speaking mm-hmm. of that sort of thing, and you know, you mentioned earlier just this very show, Colleen, you and I both have day jobs. Yours is running Fantasy Gifts, of course, yeah. mm-hmm. all the stores in Minnesota. And I work for a, another company. Mm-hmm. And at a company wide meeting today, they do, it's kind of cool. They allow you to submit questions and the appropriate executive answers, right? Mm-hmm. And today, our uh, vice president of people. Mm-hmm was up there and after she answered all of the questions that were under her purview, the last thing she said, she read it and she said, this is not a question, but it's more of a note. And this person, um, wanted to have, have it notify everyone else in the company that they object to the use of the term guys, um, when referring to teams or groups in meetings and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, I was kind of looking around and just, you know, I wasn't trying to figure out who did it, but I'm sitting here thinking, God, do I do that? You know, scanning my brain. I try not to, you know, I don't know, but now I'm going to have to be really careful. And I know that we have three transgender people um, that one of them basically wrote a letter to the company saying, I'm going to start dressing a different way. Mm. And then um, whatever. Here and my pronouns. Yeah. Um, they didn't ask about oh, the pronoun. Oh. That, that particular person didn't oh. um, at the time. But um, anyway, and everybody has supported this person and does refer to that person by the name of the mm-hmm. other gender mm-hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. they, they all use the bathrooms that they choose and mm-hmm. nobody you yep. know has an mm-hmm. issue. I think, though, that is such a colloquialism that I just – and the, the the VP said, well, you know, this is very Midwestern, blah, blah, blah. I'm not from the Midwest, but, boy, that's been used all my life. And it, I, I'm – It is it is really difficult to stop using guys. It's also – and even though I've got – I've had plenty of transgender employees and, and, and folks out there, I also have the, – the other thing that's difficult to get used to using – and just because it's hard doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Yeah. They – to use the word they in a singular way because it got so pounded into you in school because someone, someone does sometimes do, they don't want to be um, uh, you, she or her or, or him or whatever. Oh. They'll use they instead. Yeah. And, or sometimes people use they now, Z E Y or Z A Y, you know, whatever, a couple different ones. And like I said, just because something is difficult doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Um, and guys, and, and I, I get that. 
because it is it's it's uh and, and i think that who's gonna have the biggest problem with it is that folks uh, uh that have a very gendered language like spanish I mean, if you have oh four, that's gonna be terrible if you have 400 women in a room and two guys you have to use the male pronoun you know the male, you know stuff like that, and I was like, "Well, that's just not that 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 that's a, that's a that's a a thought that's a, a century is hold over, just like the singing is." Yeah, that, you know, it's going the romance there. languages are going to be tricky. But all I can say is, with regard to using they as singular or whatever mm-hmm. you were saying, they or whatever. That I do as a writer by trade. That's mm-hmm. not my title, but I that is what I do a great mm-hmm. deal of. I do have a problem. I'm not going to lie. I have no problem with people, you know, living their mm-hmm. truth and things like that. But if you start and, and guys, I can, I can see, okay. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, but don't tell me I have to change what I went to college for. Um, I, I'm just, that's, well, that's a little too much for me. change all the time though. No, but you know what, Colleen, there comes a point where people do cross the line where it's like, mm-hmm. if I respect you mm-hmm. and I pretty much, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. everything else about you. You know, now all of a sudden you're kind of stepping on me. I feel like there when when you you yeah, know okay. people, I I feel that's a little bit too much. There's got to be, you know, to teach me how to talk differently and shame me if I don't or call me. Well, that part's a, you know, yeah, you know, that part yeah, you you move on. But I just find fascinating that that you know because I've got friends that are writers and stuff like that. And the one thing, honestly, that's that's screwing most of us up is using they as a singular because it's been i mean oh my god did you get that pounded into you well you know they are one person though Mm -hmm. i mean that's what's hard for me yeah but sometimes they does there there are there are like tiny tiny examples in the english language which i since i'm not going through that it does get used at but that is the one that i mean almost everything else gets stuck in my brain that's fine but i wonder why that particular I, I, did, did we all have just that one uh just a ton of red ink all over our papers as, as a kid you know when we screwed up the singular and the plural but i, I guess know. i guess when you say this though i mean seriously mm. one person regardless of what they identify is is still one entity mm-hmm. you're not two or mm-hmm. five you are one mm-hmm. so i don't understand why they get to dictate that one yeah. that one to me just feels unfair mm-hmm. But we can agree to disagree. And I mean, again, it has nothing to do with people wanting to live their truth. That's mm-hmm. fine with me, yeah. you know, because I cope peacefully. I think, with like, uh, I think it's Zay, you know, coming up with a, yeah, coming up with a, with, with a gender neutral proton singular would make, you know, a little bit more sense. Then they got to lay it all out and give us some guidelines because I am a grammatical guideline kind of person. <laughs> and I want to so see. So do you see Oxford comma? Do I? Uh, no. You don't? Okay. Mm-hmm. I tend to because I I look at sentences sometimes and I'm like, oh that is so good looking. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I don't. You know, you don't. Okay, yeah. That that is something that I find myself unable to stop using, and I'm yeah. glad that I don't have any anyone that's gonna that's gonna um, check my copywriting on it. No, because I'm the you know just yeah. going through that. Oh no, and but I know folks in academia or folks that have to do other stuff and they they go back and forth. Oh, with, it's a thing. With, yeah. It's a thing. Going through, you know, whether or not it's clear enough. And I'm like, why would you not want clarity? <laughs> there are so many things that I we're know. talking about here that are so unclear. <laughs> when I look at a sentence and I'm like, we could really use a comma here. I think the comma should become a protected class. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that, you know, because I mean, I can see that there are times when you, you know, there are times, you know, there are times when you don't need it and it's clear, but there are a lot of times you're like, you know, honestly, you, we can use some clarity there in in the mm-hmm. arena in which I oh, work. Yeah. We agreed from an editorial standpoint, what the policy is going to be. Oh yeah. You got to pick. Yeah. We all had to just agree. Mm-hmm. And the, the people that had the most say, which would be me and one other person, mm-hmm. um, said no. And so that's fine. And everybody just needs to know what the guidelines are. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I don't it because because that because that because that's just because I'll be I'll be doing something and I'll be especially in my opinion when you're doing like short little posts like on social media mm-hmm. stuff, I know that when you're you know when you're sometimes it makes a big ass difference. Yeah, I bet, it, I bet it would make less difference in a longer piece where you had more context. Oh, for sure. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And social posts, I never, I never, I don't get judgy on that no. because, no. because a lot of people write those like they talk mm-hmm. and you can kind of, if you know, yeah, the, if you, you know, know the person, you, ex- yeah. you, you read it, you read as it them. in yes, rep. yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't even get me started on apostrophes used for plurals versus possessions because I will lose my shit. I ha- I, I was a very, very poor student when it came to stuff like that. It has taken me years and I am really, really glad I know, honestly, that when I'm typing things that it will pop up and go, you fuck this up. OK, let me go back yeah. and I'll look at it and I'll look at it. And I'm like, OK, now what's the rule here? And I, I, yeah. like, oh, yeah. I am 54 years old, but I got to look at that sometimes because oh, yeah. I was so poor at it in high school and college. Yep. And I was st- you know, and, and they didn't seem to care, honestly, in the early 80s. I mean, they just a lot of my teachers said, do they understand the 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 uh, the the information, not did she get the grammar right? Right. And, you know, you know, there was not there was not a lot of that. Sure. And so, but it, but it hindered me because there were just times now, like I'll attempt to write a blog, and I have to like step away from from the day, and then go back and look at it, and I go, what the fuck did I write? Yep. And I got to go back in and poke it out because I know what I was saying in my head. Mm-hmm. Oh, someone else looks at it and goes. What the fuck are you doing, Colleen? Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. So yeah, all of a sudden we got into complete. Oh, sorry. Com- no, we do it. This but is what it we do. But this is because it, it, language means something. Yeah. It really does. People say, you know, sticks and stones, you know, will break people's words. No, words can hurt. They can, but yeah, but calling somebody there. a shithead or an asshole is not the same no. as as very you know mm-hmm. the standard communication conveyances. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but no, I mean, it, I think that one thing that people it would be really great is I think because I know like where I work, everybody is definitely trying. So let's not over you know yeah. well, judge yeah, people. The, yeah, I mean, you, there, there's an intent. I mean, when, when folks purposely use a wrong name <clears throat> or a wrong gender or you know or or, or, or exclude there's a, you know mm-hmm. there's the problem someone uh that you know uh, blurts out something you know in a you know we're like oh my god and you just you move on mm-hmm. you don't dwell on it right mm-hmm. yeah because because i think some of this stuff has gone a little far in some cases and and um, I, we have one of our values is assume positive intent. And I think that's a something that people should try to do in life. <laughs> so, um, back at you next week, Miss Colleen. Sounds good.